Welcome to Nonprofit Network, powered by Stokes Auction Group. We are a podcast focused on benefit auctions and fundraising events for the nonprofit community. We are a group of fundraising professionals that specialize in raising funds to improve communities of all sizes. And here it is. Is episode ten. My name ten. is Kelly Stokes. And the cast today, Mrs. Kelly Shinfeld. Ten episode ten. Ten episodes. That's yeah. ten weeks. Oh, and Mr. Paul Shinfeld. Hey, 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 guys! Thanks for being here. Ten weeks. Ten. Ten. Ten, ten. ten. ten episodes. Wrap your head around that. Can you believe that? That's right? that's just over a month. I want to say. Awesome. Yeah. You <laughs> need help. Just <laughs> over a couple of months. And we're having coffee today. That's right. Coffee today. Going. Really good coffee. That's right. So uh, as we were horrible. updating our mm. running show last week, we got to talking about what we'd kick it off with. And you have to revise a statement you made on the I last do. cast. I have You're to apologize. You're kind of going backwards on, on Will Smith. I huh? am. I have to apologize to everybody. Um, our daughter is a sixth grade teacher. True. And um, and then we're not going to talk about this anymore because this is slap silly business. We shouldn't be talking about it. But I just needed to be out there on the podcast land that I am not a supporter of what Will did now. Oh, okay. Now, granted, Chris Rock shouldn't have said what he said about Jada. That sucks, you know. But comedians are rash. That's the way that they are. just they just are that way. However. He had time to calm down, and that my daughter brought that to my attention. That is a good point. She says she tells her students to count to ten, and she said, Mom, he had plenty of time to count to ten. And so, unfortunately, there's a respect thing there, and you know what? Yeah. I know he feels bad about it, but I think that down the side, he might be a little bit of a diva. I don't know that. Listen, if Will Smith is listening, reach out to us. Give us a call, Will. we will put you in touch with somebody that can guide you down the counting to ten rule. I will put you in touch with my sixth grade daughter <laughs> teacher, and that could teach you that. Because you, Will Smith, are a good man. Who is... <laughs> You're going to teach him... All I have to say. Sixth grade diffusing But techniques. you lost your cool, and that was bad. <laughs> Dude, I think... Yeah, no, it, it happened. Like, it does. It happens. It, it doesn't... It seems like it's not really aging well. In the beginning, it was like, hot take, you're one side or the other. And now it's like, maybe we shouldn't let people hit people on, telev- on television. Maybe. Totally yeah, gone the other like, way. totally maybe like... Maybe we should. Gone the other way. Thank yeah. God. Thank now God. they're calling it assault. Oh, really? Oh, yeah. Yeah, I wouldn't yeah. go that far. I, I think it, well, it is assault. Well, I think that Chris Rock stood there and saw him coming and could have moved and said, hey, dude, let's get get off the stage and so talk about that later. And why did nobody stop him from approaching Chris Rock? Here's the problem with assault. Like Jada. Jada should have stopped him. Is it's on camera forever. Like forever. It's on the internet forever. Yeah. So, yeah. But um, we'll, uh, I got to say, Chris Rock is taking it pretty well. I saw his opening bit in his his stand-up routine that followed the next day. Oh, good. And he seemed pretty cool about it. Like, he wasn't upset. He was just kind of let it roll off his back. But, uh, yeah, I thought he handled himself pretty well. Me too. He's yeah. like, let's just move on. Yeah, which is totally what people should be doing nowadays. So I just wanted to correct my first stance on it because, you know what? I can apologize. I, I can understand when I've done something wrong or said something wrong. Exactly. Uh, do that. But besides that, the last episode was perfect. Um, perfect. I don't know if you watched it. We covered sound and how essential sound is yep. in, in a room. And that <clears> is <throat> consistently being reminded in front of us with the events. In fact, just this last weekend, we had a couple of events. And the two events that we debriefed this morning had to do with um, selling raffles. So the issues that they had is that they could not communicate with guests in the foyer. So not the main ballroom, the front cocktail silent auction area. So there's people milling about and the audio was only set up in the main ballroom where the live event was taking place. And that's a common error. Common error, right? That's very common. So when you're talking to your sound people, make sure you got sound in both both rooms. Yeah. So, I mean, in regard to like rehab, these weekends problem couldn't communicate with the guests in the foyer mm. downside to that you couldn't like sell tickets so raffle tickets or games or whatever the case may be that you would want to advertise during that hour is not getting through to your customer because they can't hear what's going yeah. on right mm-hmm. so how would you improve that sound out there better sound in the foyer yeah right? i mean that's as just simple as two period. speakers yeah. yeah just two speakers and a separate mic we yeah. had a situation like that recently with one show i did where um, all of the event was in the main room. We had all the silent, mm-hmm. all the raffle ticket sales. Was in, but there was one um, game or one display that was out there where 
parents could write messages on these little tiles when they were 10 bucks and they were going to make them all into one great big tile and hang it in the school. Oh, that's cool. That's but it cool. was all by itself out in the foyer. Mm. And not only is that the wrong placement because everything else is in there, is mm -hmm. in the main room, but there was no sound out there for me to even talk to those people. Even promote it, yeah. To even promote it, so... Yeah. yeah, so I mean, definitely an essential, and that's one way to improve it, right? Make sure that you uh, prioritize the sound in that front area, wherever that may be, or put the activities you have where the sound is brightest or brighter, I guess mm -hmm. would be the right way to describe yeah. that, right? You could have remo relocated, they could have relocated that fundraising opportunity to a place where you could actually hear. And there was plenty but, of room in there, too. Yeah, right? Think, so and that's the thing, the way that Shelby puts that is that they're fundraising opportunities. So if we don't have the sound out in that front room, you know, clear and able to communicate, because Mark runs into that all the time, and it's so frustrating for him. He's like, babe, I got no sound in the, in the silent. And by night of, it's too late to do yeah. anything, no, right? It, it's just too late to do made. anything. Well, here, here's a speaker I happen yeah. to carry with me and a we microphone. Need to, we yeah. need to help you promote these games <laughs> yeah. and these raffles. And the only way we can do that is by communicating with everybody at yeah. the same time. Yeah, Agreed. That's exactly right. Agreed. So another show that we did have this weekend took place in the greater Oregon uh, Territory. And essentially what happened, greater Oregon Oregon too, Territory. Back, like, that's, we yeah, had to bring the sound in in a wagon. <laughs> yes. And one of the axles broke <laughs> on the wagon. But we had the head chef place. there yeah. with us to replace said wood wheel. Just came off the Oregon Trail. Just came off the trail. Yeah. So keep going, Shelby. Yeah, his digital Very aunt died in malaria. Um, <laughs> <laughs> so at this event that was in Oregon, they were doing the best of live raffle and it was advertised in their catalog that they were going to be giving away any item in the live auction if their ticket got drawn. Golden ticket. Or they get $500, right? So they go to draw the ticket, auctioneer pulls the ticket out and the chair stands up and says, no, 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 they don't get to choose an item out of the live auction. <gasps> they win $500. Right, so it's advertised one way, Ooh. and leadership in the room thinks completely different bro, than what bro. is printed in the catalog, <laughs> right? So they ended up just giving the winner $500, and it was all good, but those conversations might be better beforehand. Yeah, and right? you got lucky. You got lucky <laughs> you got that lucky. it was good. That's exactly you got right. lucky that whoever won it was a decent person, because yeah. some people would be like, ah, oh, no, that's why I bought the ticket. Yeah, I'm taking the trip to Hawaii. Thank I'll be you very taking much. that trip, so you better <laughs> yeah. find out if you can get that double aid. And then the other <laughs> thing that played out in this room specifically was that they had an item that they've had for years and years. They sell it every year. This year, it was not printed in the catalog. Oh. So auctioneer never sells said item. Get all the way to the end of the night, and one of the paid, one of the volunteers says, hey, what happened to that item that we get every year? And the chair goes, oh yeah, we never sold that thing. So now the room is dispersed. There's not an, a, uh, an audience to sell this item to. Oh, so no. they end up selling it directly to the individual that asked on this item. And I know this room decently well. This is an item that sells very well each and every year. Oh, no. Shucks. So this is the same event. So, I mean, how do you improve that room specifically? Fundraising opportunity missed there. Yes. You, you missed some opportunities and having communication with the event team prior to. These are the items. They're in the catalog. You know, I know that the catalog came in hot that night yeah. and it was probably a reprint of last year yeah. based on what I'm hearing with the best of live and also that item not going to auction. I think they cut and paste last year's yeah. catalog and then just went with it. And when it showed up late, it all didn't come together as needed. So it was a little bit messy down there. Yeah. And all these, Ooh. all these things that we've been talking about, you know, the last 10 weeks or nine weeks have been fundraising opportunities, right? <laughs> right. We've been talking about the dessert dash. We've been talking about, oh my gosh, fund a need. We've been talking about all kinds of things, sound, your venues, this, that, the other thing. And all of those fundraising opportunities, and I love that you use that like that, come into a timeline. A timeline. That is exactly right. And that is our topic for the day is the timeline. I do do want to run through real quick because we had some user feedback or some uh, viewer feedback in terms of reviewing last weekend. Sound in the foyer will help you communicate with guests. If you don't have good sound in the yes. foyer, definitely address that. Also, 
plan with your auction team on what you're being offered and exactly what the raffles are going to look like. If it's printed one way and verbalized another, that needs to be made clear to your audience. So that's kind of a, a bow on the end of that. Um, we want to be really lib uh, deliberate when talking about why we're discussing these events because we're nitpicking them and finding opportunities of improvement. And those are the opportunities of improvement there. These events are still being successful. Yes. They're still successful events. However, what we do in our business is we unfortunately and fortunately seek out perfection so that we are optimizing every single opportunity you guys can utilize every single I think opportunity we're still knocking the rust off you guys. Yeah, I think you're I right. think, we're I knocking it off bit. and just you know if you got to get a list of things because you might mm -hmm. forget something make a list make a list yeah that's how we used to do it check it in a timely check it off. Check manner it twice. That's you can right. find out who's not in that. <laughs> so today's topic, as previously mentioned, is timeline. Timeline, timeline, timeline. Whoa, whoa, how whoa, to whoa, plan whoa. a timeline, how to tackle a timeline for your event and best practices. So when figuring out a timeline, what we're talking about is when your guests show up to said location, what does the minute by minute, hour by hour flow of that night look like? And my starting point for a lot of timeline conversation is what time do you want to end? Mm -hmm. And then you kind of yeah. So let's reverse work engineer backwards. it. Yeah. Exactly. So, yeah. so what dictates an end time of an event? Well, I will tell you that the my husband and I do kind of a fun thing. What time do you think this event's going to end? Okay. <laughs> so we do that. Uh, at, you know, and you we, write it down. You place a bet. And we place who's a bet. That's right. Drink. Who's buying the first drink? And <laughs> <laughs> that's you know, no matter who our team is, that's what we kind of do. And that's actually a positive move because you see what their timeline is that they have written down, right? But you know what that audience, you're looking at the size of the room, you're looking at the, you've seen the packages, you've, you've seen the fun and neat video more than likely or the raise right. the paddle video by then. And so you kind of have a better idea, you know, are we going to be close to the timeline or are we going to overshoot the timeline? Night of, it's very difficult to address timeline issues. Right. You can push them a little bit or pull them back a little bit, but you can't really address with your, with your, you know, team. <laughs> Well, this timeline's a little off, this, that, and the other thing. The stresses that they all have are substantially well, larger. And so. sometimes what I find in the timeline is you can either, like, really expedite things if it's a weak, eh, weak timeline. Let, let me get more specific on that. So if you have a timeline that has a lot of holes in it or has a lot of movement in it, you can really speed up an event. Like, I think you had one recently where you ended almost an hour prior to propose timeline. And it's because you didn't have enough fill in there to really mm -hmm. justify the entire hour that was left. Right. For there you, was correct? a lot of stuff we had to get to prior, and I thought we should take advantage of that extra 45 minutes, whatever it was, almost yeah. an hour. Right. How did your and audience taken... react to that, though? Did they, did beautifully. that, beautifully? I was going to uh, kind of piggyback on on uh, the initial timeline issue of when do we want to finish. Yeah, well, hold, I think well, before we go there, just okay. something I want to point out is like you just said that you could move up your timeline 45 minutes. In your scenario, you said that we only had 20 minutes or so to kind of move. Mm -hmm. And the reason those are different is based on what is being accomplished that night. More often than not, if you have a very tight timeline, you're not moving that thing more than 20 minutes over the course of the night because you are bound to the happenings that happen in that room. So 20 minutes You're bound to sense. the videos, to the speakers, right. to the... So that's more often the case, right? rather than a 45 minute time, uh, push or pull based on the timeline because normally those are full. Sorry to jump in on you, I just kind of wanted to, to point that out. That's a good point. So okay, but, Shelby. But, you're, but you were talking about, and I like where you're going with that, is how do you reverse engineer the timeline is where I think you were going, right? Yep. Paul? And yeah, and I, I would say uh, audience demographic is probably the number one thing. Yeah, What's agreed. the average age of your audience? Completely. Right, yeah. but I mean, the, I did a gig several weeks ago and it was an older crowd. And like we want to be done by eight thirty. Yeah. Playing with the blue crew, huh? Right. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> that so. means blue hair. That's not yeah. blue collar. Yeah, blue but, hair, but right? the blue yeah. crew's got the checkbook, so you know we want we want to make sure they're awake and write that right. check. So does that the mean younger audience? <laughs> yeah. Like, hey, we're out till ten or eleven or whatever. <laughs> we're out till nine thirty. We got the babysitter <laughs> till ten o'clock. So you're eating dinner at four thirty on a Saturday. There's a good chance. You might be a blue hair. <laughs> but I am, we, I dye this stuff. So I dye this might be blue. Stuff. You never know. Sounds like you're looking for an excuse to eat at 4 o'clock moving forward. That's what yeah. I'm hearing, right, Paul? 
Yeah, yeah, she cleaned the door to that, yeah. <laughs> Got to get out of here. It's almost time for dinner, folks. <laughs> I'm there. Um, <clears throat> so I think, Paul, you're exactly onto it, right? I think the end of the day, what you're going to look at is what is the witching hour for your room. At what point are people going to stand up and walk out? If they're an older crowd, they might be done by 9 o'clock. They might be done by 8.15. Yeah. So you have to reverse engineer that to know what you need to accomplish has to happen before you hit 8.15. Because if you've got a room that's done at 8 o'clock and your event goes to 9.30, by the time 9.15 comes around, you've got one table in a room of 200. Right. And that don't work. No. But, that does not work. But I do think that also... If you save energy for different times within this timeline, timeline isn't necessarily just about the time, mm -hmm. right? It could be about the different energies during the, right. the course of the night, right? Because we all know the auction itself or the evening is its own live organism the second we start. Mm -hmm. And it takes, on, it takes on so many different things. So make sure that you have some energy saved for end of night as well, you know, regardless of what time you yeah. you start and stop. And, and I think what you're saying is, like, make sure that you're through the majority of the program before people leave, right? Absolutely. You want that back in, that last third of the night, quarter of the night, whatever it ends up being. You want there to be energy and attention that is given from the audience at that mm -hmm. time. Um, yeah. So something that I always talk about when establishing timeline is start with the end time. I want to end here, so when am I going to start? And when you have your start, your end and start time, normally starting with the starting with the end time, which is kind of weird to say, <laughs> but essentially you're going to carve out two hours to three hours of what I call revenue minutes. In other words, you're going to have 200 people on site for two hours. And in those two hours, you want to raise X amount of dollars. How are we going to use those revenue, revenue minutes, minutes this is in order cool to utilize word. them to make it profitable for the organization? Revenue right? minutes. If you're doing an auction, how many items are you doing? If you're doing a fund, how long is your presentation, right? Is it a 10 minute presentation and it's gonna take you 10 minutes to collect donations? Okay, now you gotta carve out that 20 minutes and place it somewhere. Then you can start looking at auction items. Okay, we have 100 auction items. Well, those are three to four minutes a piece. Do you have enough time to fit in those 100 live auction items? Mm -hmm. The answer is normally no. No. So whatever time you have left over after stacking in the intro and the fund, you're then left with those items that can be presented in three to four minutes is kind of what we say can it be can it go longer yes can it go shorter yes but for the most part three to four is kind of where we and land. from an auctioneer's perspective and i'm sure you that you guys would agree we're going to look through that list of eight to twelve items mm -hmm. and you're going to see a all expense trip to france and you're going to need to spend a little bit more time on that yeah. than you are the sixth Definitely. grade class project so Definitely. Leave that to us. We're going to probably go a minute and a half on the class project, but we're going to go four, maybe five on that trip to France. Exactly, yeah. We'll as balance. well as we're going to lift those people up if the donors are in the room because <laughs> we want to really play that too. We, oh, want those, right. we want those donors to keep giving that France trip. So you may have to... Get a stroke them a little really bit. Really yeah. take the talk time to talk them up because it's not necessarily today's dollars as much as it could be tomorrow's dollars. Yeah. But I, th I think that you're right on the money. I think, too, that a way that you can separate things in your timeline is, is understanding the difference between a live auction and a program. Mm -hmm. I think that sometimes, um, like a few of the auctions that we've done so far, there's quite a bit of program in the beginning, which is you know, awards given or, or community pieces being talked about and things. And that's almost separate from your auction timeline, it yeah. feels like. Yeah, agreed. I mean, I think that at the end of the day, what Have you're you looking that? at is, yeah. is yeah. you know, it's an award ceremony. What does that look like? Right. And in fact, that's one of the events we helped with this last week was a, was a donation only portion of the night. And they basically brought in a comedian. So what they did is they had the fundraising portion take place in the beginning and then at the end they brought in a, on a, a comedian. Now I think this specific event had issues that I won't get into, but essentially they were trying to do a live event virtual and I don't think the comedian really connected the virtual crowd and, and the in-person crowd. Well, how could you? 
But, wow. but what I want to get at, tough. when I'm dancing around, is your entertainment is also part of this equation, yeah. right? So say, for example, you want to bring in some celebrity magician. We'll call him a celebrity magician. How long is that magician set, right? Is it an hour? Is it 30 minutes? Okay, run that math and then figure out where you're going to fit that individual in your timeline. Because if that or that a magician takes place right in the prime of the event, you're basically using those minutes for entertainment, yeah. right? So more often than not, what we see in these fundraising slash entertainment type um, events is that we're putting the entertainment in the back. Therefore, if people want to stay for the, with a comedian, great. If people want to leave, great. If it's a rock band, same thing. You want to get up and dance at the end, great. You don't, great. But normally that entertainment is put at the end of the night or you just have to realize that you're dedicating a good chunk of primetime fundraising mm -hmm. towards entertainment. Yeah. And how often have we walked into events that haven't thought all the way through and they're like, no, we got super big name guitarist to play. Yeah. And then before you know it, you're hitting the stage trying to raise money at 10 o'clock at night, East Coast time, and mm -hmm. it doesn't work, right? No, it's true. Yeah. I think that prime fundraising opportunity is between 8 and 9. Yeah. Uh, but based Closer on to eight and eight thirty. Yeah, but based I on believe. your comment, it mm -hmm. also goes back to demographic. Yep. True. And uh, so audience blend and where you're at, right? You go to New York City, they'll stick with you till midnight. Oh, you they, they I mean? don't eat till nine thirty right. at night. I mean, that's that's NYC. Should I do that same thing in rural Oregon? Good luck. No. You've got to be up with the sun. But buddy. that is kind right. of the you thing know? too. Is it? It is. Um, you know geographical very much so it, yeah, it really is so. So, something that we've noticed is that geographically east coast and midwest they 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 stay and play yeah later and i will also say i feel that people are staying longer because we've been shut in for two and a half years we haven't lost oh, i don't any feel seats like yet. anybody's <laughs> leaving early no we you haven't feel the same way yeah we yeah. haven't had any seat like i i, I will tell you it's impressive yeah. Uh, how we are keeping the tables going and it's because they're enjoying being with each other and things like that. So Absolutely. the timeline thing is that, you know, you want to keep it moving to keep everybody interested for sure. Mm -hmm. It's a big part of it. It, it is. is, you know, I would say between sound and timeline. Yeah. And, and know that we could dive deeper into this topic, right? I mean, this is a topic that we could really talk about sequencing an, a live auction. Like, where do we want these items and why? That's back to timeline. But see, Funny they could call our where. office and have that. They could and call. I don't mean to throw out an ad boy so. to us because we are not the ones that toot our horns. Ma'am, But I will say, I will say that these are things that our office can help you with. There you go. Definitely. And if you would like more of us or help guide the conversation, feel free to reach out. Know that we appreciate you being with us today. Um, if you want more, you can follow us on feedback. Uh, follow um, feedback. Us follow on us on feedback.com. Let's see what that is. Uh, is that a I, thing? I don't, I'm it sure it be. is. It yeah. will be now. Someone just purchased it if they already did. <laughs> you can follow us on Facebook. Video version of this available on YouTube. Please subscribe, like, and comment on the video if you'd be so kind. Or shoot us an email to auction at stokesauctiongroup.com. If you like what you hear, leave us a review. You got a lot going on. Our here. intro music is Brighter Days Ahead by Mixar. Big thank you to you. And Do we you? appreciate all of you watching us this week. Thanks. You guys go out and be bold. Be healthy. <laughs> and go do good. Yes. Cheers, fellas. Cheers. Have a good day. Have a good day. It's a mocha. Ah.